I'm Rachel Romeliotis, a senior editor at O'Reilly Media, and I am at Strata RX with Amik Ahmad. He is the founder of the Sunday Paper Company. Thank you for joining me. Thanks for having me. So you gave a workshop uh, here at Strata RX called Emotional Healthcare, Why Data Doesn't Matter. That's pretty yeah. bold. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me a little bit about yeah, it. Um, so the real point of the workshop was to convey the idea that data doesn't matter on a fundamental level with patients. And so there are a lot of places where big data is having a major impact, such as genomics research or where they're trying to crunch lots and lots of numbers, but there's a real value to kind of using big data to tap into this emotional response that patients have. And so that's kind of what I wanted to start to convey mm -hmm. uh, during the workshop and talk about things like where the translation occurs mm -hmm. um, between the numbers and that emotional response sure. that patients need um, to really give them engaging experiences that can potentially change their behavior. That makes a lot of sense. So so storytelling and emotional uh, design are sort of common themes that you're bringing up when, when we're talking about data. Um, why do you think that they are so important? I mean, you touched upon it a little bit, um, but could you expand upon why? Yeah, so um, people need stories. Uh, that's how we learn things and that's what changes our behavior. Um, when someone talks to you about, let's say, what you're going to do for the rest of your life, someone might say, oh well, you only have 15 years to left to live or the average life expectancy is 59 or 60 or whatever. Um, that number doesn't really compute because you're just giving them a figure. Sure. But if you start to tell them, well look, uh, this is what happened to someone in the last 20 years, or this is what they accomplished in 20 years, those stories have a much greater effect um, on a person because what happens is storytelling taps into the cortical indexing of a person's brain, and those are where mem that's where memories are formed. Mm -hmm. um, and like I said in my workshop, what happens is there's these interactions, and those translate into memories, and it's memories that change behavior. Sure. Um, and that's where storytelling really comes into play. And that's something that data just can't do. Jer Thorpe, uh, he is at NYU's ITP program, uh, and he was formerly at the New York Times as a data artist, uh, and he talks about the OAA principle of data visualization. Can you tell me a little bit about what that is? Um, yeah, totally. So uh, he was an adjunct professor at, at NYU while I was a student there, so I, I had the honor of learning a lot about visualizations and, and storytelling from him. Mm -hmm. um, and I think really before anybody, he was one of the first people to start thinking about storytelling and data. Not only that, but also thinking about what comes after the visualization. So um, in the OA principle, I think he, he talks about two different kinds of audiences. Um, and I think it really connects with the workshop I gave, or the Ignite talk I gave last night, where I talked about the difference between imagination and calculation. Mm -hmm. And so there's people that really resonate with the, the imagination really resonates with them and then there's other people where the calculation is, sure. is the part that really resonates with them so what Jared tries to do in the article that what he tries to say in the article is that you always have to surprise someone with the ooh mm -hmm. first and kind of loop them in sure and then you give them the ah moment where okay you know you give them the the reasoning behind why he did what he did um so i think a lot of people would say that, yeah, it's you're just showing more data points in the beginning uh, with the, the ooh moment. Mm -hmm. But really what he's doing is he's going through the process of translation, um, which is something I talked about in my workshop. And so he took a bunch of data that was plotted, and, yeah, you could show them a bar graph or a chart, but he's really doing visual storytelling and mm -hmm. translating that data into a new medium. Um, which is really a powerful thing. Definitely. So what would you like to see concerning uh, storytelling and data in the next few years? Well, that's, that's an interesting question. Um, like we said before, people need stories, um, and stories are what help change people's behavior. And so what I think is going to happen is a lot of technology is going to start to proliferate throughout healthcare that is you know, used in other industries right now. Um, we already have mobile kind of mm -hmm. becoming really big in healthcare. Um, but I think what really needs to happen is, let's use an example of uh, a popular product like the fuel ban. Sure. There's a lot of design that comes 
that's that's behind a project like the fuel band, um, especially industrial design because they make a, a beautiful product. But what they're really doing is they're taking data, one form of data, and it's almost as if they're trying to translate it into something else that's more understandable for a human. Mm -hmm. But they're really just doing math. Um, they're taking a set of numbers and changing it into another number, which mm -hmm. is like self quantification. Sure, sure. Um, but in my workshop, I talk about how that isn't. People don't like numbers. Um, that's not how you change a person's behavior. You have to actually translate it into something else. And so I'd really like to see people taking it that step further mm -hmm. um, and translating those numbers into things that are more relatable. And at a conference like this, I think it's really important to start talking about those things because often we're designing more for machines mm -hmm. here than we are for human beings. Um, and I know it's exciting for, particularly for our group of people because you know, exascale, pentascale, and these kinds of things mm -hmm. sound really cool. Um, but at the end of the day, design has to come at the beginning along with the engineering. Sure. And it's people at a conference like this that have those skills to be the new kinds of designers mm -hmm. in the future. Um, it's people that have those data analysis skills and the design skills and the interaction design skills and the coding skills that really will be the designers of the future. And so... I'd like to see places like this really start to move towards thinking about those kinds of topics mm -hmm. and then influence healthcare that way with technology. Well, I think you've got a really important message, and I'm glad you're getting it out there. Thanks for joining me today. Yeah, thanks for having me.